What's up, Pro Flippers? On today's episode, you guys are in for a treat. We have an interview again with one of our Flipper University alumni, Jenny. We t- got to talk to her the other day during one of our live trainings. We were doing a series. You've heard a couple of interviews already. Just really helping some of our members get through their own roadblocks in their mindset and overcoming obstacles. So she dives into some of the obstacles she had to overcome. She just made a $6,000 flip, which was really on cool. On a single item. On a single item and had to walk through a couple things of her own like can I really do this so we got to talk to her about that and yeah so hopefully this helps give you encouragement and motivation to get to work and make some more flipping money what's up guys hey guys let me make sure we're in happy Thursday afternoon hopefully everybody's doing well we are excited to talk to Jenny today and kind of get insight into her business we've known that she's she stepped out of her comfort zone within the last year She's done some cool stuff. She's One had of her some, biggest flips this last year. So we'll right. talk about that too. Had I'm some excited. obstacles that she's overcome and just want to kind of get a feel for how she's been able to do that, what she's been able to do to overcome obstacles and really get out of her head and make her go to that next level of flipping. So we're super excited to have her on here today and, and get to ask her some questions. So All right, um, let's go ahead and bring her on. Without further ado, <laughs> Jenny, thanks for jumping on here and spending some time with us. Hi, thanks for having me. Awesome. Everybody, if you can hear her, let us know, but I think we're good. Wait, do I have a little bit of back feed? You do, but I'm not sure why. Okay. I think we should be good. Cool. All right. Yeah. So we just want to start, not everybody in the, you know, some of the people in the group are new. Mm -hmm. They just joined with this new program. And so tell us a little about how you got started. I kind of titled this, you know, your $5 Mm -hmm. flip into the 2300, which was your first like big one. So tell us a little bit about that story and then how you guys got started from there. Yeah. So I started reselling about six years ago. It was shortly after the birth of our third child and I decided to become a stay at home mom. And so, um, just to kind of supplement income a little bit, I would kind of purge things that we had that weren't, we weren't using toys that the kids, you know, no longer played with clothes. I would just find things around the house just to kind of get rid of, I would sell the items on Facebook marketplace for porch pickup. So there was no shipping, there was no eBay, it was just all local. And we were thrilled if we could make, you know, maybe a hundred or $200 or $200 a month doing that. After we started doing that, my husband got more excited about this kind of being a little bit of a side hustle. So he would take his love for thrift sailing and going to estate sales and the like and find items that he could buy and make a profit on. So Back when we first found the two of you, you know, our business model, if you could even call it that, because it wasn't a business, was trying to find items that we could make maybe $20 on and sell them locally. And the more my husband would find items, the more overwhelmed I would kind of get because he would buy kind of enthusiastically. And our kids at the time were virtual school because it was right after COVID hit. And so I had three kids at home and I was trying to balance just life. And so I was looking for a way to kind of do things differently. And that's when I first found out about flea market flippers. So this is, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. So this is the fall of 2019. And the two of you had kind of a introductory four week course, similar to this one right now called flip it. I think it was flip it for Christmas challenge. And so I had joined that. And so we were kind of learning about your process and trying to kind of learn from the two of you and do things a little bit differently. Well, it was in that challenge that you would talk about finding things that you already own, you know, and you talk about, you know, not investing in in the business, just finding things that you already owned. And you'd also talked about flipping larger items. Well, it was through that course that We had, my husband had purchased this item a while ago. It was a canoe. It was a five foot model birch bark canoe made just like the Native Americans would have made hundreds of years ago. And he had purchased this for $5 at an estate sale. And he just brought it home and we admired it. And it sat on our table for a while and it would just strike up conversations. You know, we would use it to strike up conversations with people because we had no idea what it was, but you could just tell from the way that it was made that somebody who made it really knew the craft and they knew what they were doing. And so we had this item and it went from our kitchen table for a while to then the corner of our living room. And we just had no idea what to do with it. And then we stuck it on the shelf in the basement. 
Well, through going through your four week training, we decided let's just give it a shot. Let's put it on eBay and see what happens. And we were at the time brand new to eBay. I think we had sold maybe a handful of items and we had only sold things through the postal service, like first class, maybe a flat rate box. And that's about it. So we posted this item on, on eBay, but prior to posting it, we did some research and through lots and lots of research, we came to find out, we, we learned that it was made by a man named Bill Haifman, who had one in the Smithsonian, who had presented one in the 1960s to President Johnson. And we found one for sale for like $6,000 at a gallery. So we posted it for a, several thousand dollars. And we weren't really concerned about it, about shipping it, because we really didn't think it would sell anytime soon. <laughs> And this so, is on <laughs> <laughs> but by around the time of the, the end of the four week training, it actually sold on eBay and we were just blown away, but we had <laughs> no idea how to, how to ship it. We, thankfully we had about four weeks to ship it because the black guy that bought it was going to be on vacation and he didn't want it sitting on his porch for several weeks. So we were kind of freaking out about what to do and how to ship it. And then one day Rob called out of the blue because I had just signed up for Flea Market Flipper, their Flipper University. And you were just calling the new people that signed up just to welcome them. And so while we were on the phone, I was able to pick your brain <laughs> as to how to ship this. And you walked me through the whole process and it worked great. <laughs> that is five, awesome such a five. cool story for five. sure and what story. so what what did you sell it for total the canoe do you remember what 2300 oh that's awesome <laughs> five dollars to 2300 i yeah. love it and i do remember calling you up and you being super excited and super <laughs> nervous and now fast forward what has it been a couple of years since you guys yeah. have been thrown into this and now just even last month you shipping a huge fryer and doing the stuff that you're doing now, it's so exciting to watch your guys' progress, your journey. It's been really, really exciting to see that. So yeah, I love it. So the recent flip, the fryer, you uh -huh. you didn't have that for super long, did you? Because I think I remember you finding it and then you got it for two twenty five, right? If I yeah, two hundred and twenty five dollars. Sold it for like almost six thousand dollars. It's five. Yeah, $5. we actually we sold it for sixty six hundred. Okay, but we ended up there ended up being a little bit of an issue. They needed a technician to come out because one of the bays wasn't working properly. So I ended up paying for that service. So it ended up in the end being, I think 6,100 is what I sold it for. Okay. I want to walk through this whole thing though, yeah. because at first when you got the fryer, so it was big, it's big. It was your biggest like uh, size. Well, even before that, you were going to walk away from this. Am, am I correct? Yes. <laughs> so I found it one evening on Facebook I looked at the price and I looked at this unit and I'm like, that's got to be a deal. I mean, you just saw the size, the quality. It was in a restaurant. And so I showed it to my husband and he's like, well, if you want it, I'll, I'll help you. But I was too scared to even inquire. But I was just thinking about it and thinking about it. And the next day I was actually listening to one of your podcasts and you had Joanna on and she was talking about... Um, how, how in the beginning she would watch other people be successful and she would ask herself, why can't I be successful? What's stopping me? And, and then she realized that she could just do these things. She just needed to kind of take that step of faith. So while I was listening to that podcast, <laughs> like, oh. I, I just inquired. I'm like, well, what, what can it hurt just to ask if it's available? And so, so I asked if it was available, asked a couple questions, and then I was pretty chicken. I still was not prepared to pull the trigger. And I went to the Facebook group, the Flipping for Profit Facebook group. I asked for advice because I was scared to death. And I remember Joanna responded and she's like, well, if you have, you know, a truck and a trailer and a place to store it, then absolutely. This is a great flip. Well, <laughs> We didn't have a trailer, we didn't have storage, and we had a truck with intermittent transmission problems, <laughs> but we still pulled the trigger. <laughs> I love that though. And, That's awesome. and it all worked out. We we told them we needed a couple days to figure to, you know, to get things figured out because it was about an hour and a half away. And he said, fine, no problem. We paid for it over the phone, borrowed our neighbor's trailer, got a storage unit lined up, and and it all worked out. See, there's always a way to figure it out. And that's what I, I mm -hmm. love about that. Like you borrowed a trailer, you didn't have mm -hmm. one, you know, you pay, paid for it. So he didn't sell it right away and you got it in the storage unit. So mm -hmm. that there's so many ways, I don't know. 
No, well, and this is a big thing. So this was large. Can you kind of walk us through how you made that decision? What was the the tipping point for you to be like, okay, this is, and for you guys that don't know, I this is a big unit. It's a commercial mm-hmm. unit. Was it three or four bays of a fryer unit? It was three bays of fryer and then one bay. So it was four bay total, three fryer. One was like a filtration system. Okay. It was six feet long and approximately 1200 pounds. There you go. So <laughs> that is just, that's big. What, mm-hmm. what was your tipping point? Because a lot of people get to that tipping point where you're at and then they back mm-hmm. down off the ledge yeah. and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. What was the moment that you're like, all right, what do I have to lose? I don't have a truck. I don't have a trailer, but I'm going to figure this out. What was the tipping point for you? I think it was just kind of asking questions. It wasn't one thing in particular. I knew my husband backed me. So he had seen enough of these flips. He had done enough freight shipping that he's like, we can do this. But I was really the one that was pretty scared. So then I would ask questions at, um, of, of the owner. I'm like, you know, is this in a basement, you know, because those are, those would be some barriers. Is this accessible? And the owner's like, oh yeah, we've got, we've got guys here working. I've got a forklift. We can get it loaded. So at least we had the loading part figured out. And my husband was willing to take the day off of work, um, to go get it, but it was really kind of going to the group and everyone saying, yes, you can do this. Yes, yes, yes. And that was the encouragement I needed to, to actually commit to it. Yeah. I love it. But I was scared to death the whole time. (laughs) Everybody is. Everybody is. When you step out of your comfort zone, it doesn't matter who you are, you are scared. And that's the thing that people really have to understand is Mm -hmm. just because you step out of your comfort zone, it, 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 one time. Exactly. It's not like you have the confidence to do it. It, you just have to know what you're doing. And I will add to this. You, the biggest point about this was you did the comps on this. So you weren't just gambling and being like, okay, well, maybe I can get some money for this. Maybe it's worth a little bit. You did the comps and that's kind mm-hmm. of one of the other ways that you knew what you were getting into. Mm-hmm. Just really, it, you just had the to, effort. Yeah. Exactly. You had to figure out the logistics wise, you knew what you were doing comp right. wise and what it could sell for. But logistics wise, you had to figure out how to get it moved, how to get it on mm-hmm. a pallet, how to ship it and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah. But I wanted to add to when you said, okay, you've done freight shipments. So your husband was like on board, you've done several. So this wasn't your, fir- like you're not diving in. This wasn't your first one. You guys right. have done, you know, cooktops, you've done other big mm-hmm. items. So you're getting, you know, you've gotten experience over time, but you were scared to do those at first too. So probably yes. like the first one of those was this all the same feelings again, right? What did you have the, some of the same fears? Along, uh, the same, us? but after we actually had it and had it in our garage, because it actually didn't fit in the storage unit. So we had to oh. move things from our garage to the storage unit. And we had to kind of jockey things around a little bit. I, I would actually say, so actually after we had it in our possession, there was less fear to freight ship it than there was to freight ship our very first item, which was a Schwinn Herodine exercise bike. And that's so little. And that's like, it, that that's nothing. But there was a lot more fear to do that initially than, than this item. It was on casters. So even though we don't, don't have a pallet jack and we don't have a forklift, like all we had to do is like build a ramp and then roll it off of the trailer into the garage and then roll it up the ramp onto a pallet. So it was all doable, but it was just a big, heavy big. piece of equipment yeah. that, that it took some, it, it took some manpower to kind of roll it back and forth, but um, it wasn't bad. I love it. If there is a will, there's a way. And you did not let stop you that you didn't have a pallet. You didn't have a, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, a pallet jack, a forklift or anything like that. You still figured out how to do it. And that's mm-hmm. the thing that people have to understand. If you have the will to do this, there are ways to do it without heavy equipment, without that kind of stuff. And I'm the same way with some of my stuff too. I don't use my forklift. I'll pick stuff up. I'll build it in a trailer on a pallet. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that you knew, hey, once we got this in the garage, man, this is, I got this. I did a, you know what? I've done the Airdyne. And for you that don't know what an Airdyne is, an Airdyne, one man can pick it up and put it on a pallet. It's not that difficult. And we're talking about something that's like- it's scary when it's your it first is, one. It the first one. It, the first one's always scary, no matter what it is, what yeah. size it is. It's always scary. And then you build on that, but it's getting that. And to say that now you're looking back at the Airdyne, you're like, oh, that was a piece of cake. So Again. Well, it, it's a huge point to note as well, is you were more scared doing that Airdyne the first time mm-hmm. than you were to do this 10 times the size and the weight of the Airdyne item. Yes. You were much more scared to do that one than you were of this one. So just for everybody who's watching and listening to this, 
your confidence begins to grow. You start to really realize what your potential is. Mm -hmm. Once you get one foot in front of the other, once you get one shipment down, you learn how to do it. It's going to get easier and easier and you're going to get better and better at it. So yeah, Jenny's just proof of that. So that's really, really exciting as well. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I love that. There's so much. And then, okay, to build on this story even more, then you got it sold for the total of 6,600. Yeah. You got it shipped out. So on a pallet, shipped out. The buyer got it. And then one of the fryers wouldn't turn on, correct? Is that what Correct. It? Yes. Okay. And so you, but you kept good communication with the buyer and right. going back and forth and you're going to figure out what to do because neither of you wanted to return this item. So right. your, right. your goal was, so what were you thinking then? It's like, oh, crap, what's going to happen? Like, what am I going to do? Like what, what kind of take us through? Your well, mind definitely mind? the initial reach out because yeah. that's when people freak out when somebody mm-hmm. gets something yeah. and they reach out and say, Hey, something's wrong with this. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what were you feeling inside and how did you combat it? Or what, what was your, next your, steps. your next steps? Thank you. I went straight to the freight group is what I did because I, I was freaking out. You know, it's a big ticket item. It's a lot of money. I don't want a customer that's, you know, unhappy. We, we obviously can't return it. And so I went and I posted the pictures to the group that the, the woman sent me. So, so it arrived. It took like three weeks to arrive because there was an ice storm. Oh. So it took forever for the woman to get it. Then it was delivered. They immediately hooked it up, I think that same day or maybe even the next day, but it was hooked up immediately. Um, two of the fryers worked great. The filtration worked great. The one fryer didn't turn on. And we knew the one fryer had a little bit of an issue because when I bought it, the owner at the resort where I bought it from, he said that it would, he had issues with the one fryer, but he said it was an intermittent issue. So I disclosed that. Uh, so there, there was a known issue. What we didn't know is that there's, there was a panel that kind of, it got screwed on, that gets screwed on. And I never like unscrewed it to look behind this panel of this fryer. Well, when, when they went to hook it up, they unscrewed it and saw that the wires had been disconnected. And, and they were, you know, concerned about that. So she messaged me, showed me pictures, and then I went to the group and they just kind of walked me through the process. I think Stacy was the first one to respond. And she's like, well, just first ask if it's damaged, you know, ask if there was anything, any indication of damage, which was a great first question, because even though it wasn't damaged, it at least got, it at least let her know that I was on the ball with getting back to them. And and it gave us both the chance just to kind of think a little bit. And, and then after that, other people piped in and they said, well, you know, to get the wires hooked up, you could look here, you could look there, or there might be, they, they just gave me a list of places to look. And I basically went through that list that other people gave me and I went from easiest to hardest. <laughs> and by easiest, meaning like, what is the cheapest for me? What is the cheapest for her? And then we kind of went down that, that path, but we had great communication. Every single time she communicated with me, she would, you know, praise some aspect, whether it would be the packaging job, whether it be my communication or the, the advice that I, I gave, the resources that I provided. So she would always find things to praise me for. And then she would have some advice for things that, or, and then she would have some advice. criticism, if yes, you will, yes. you know, cause she wanted this fixed and she thought it was going to be working properly and it wasn't. And so We had really good communication throughout the whole process. And then it was maybe three weeks since I had last heard from her. And I thought things were good. I thought maybe I wouldn't hear from her again. And then they got a $60 bill from the freight company. And that kind of just spurred things on again. So then she reached out. She's like, what is this $60 bill? And and she was upset about that. And then because of that bill, then she's like, you know, we still don't have this fryer fixed. And so at that point, I realized that that the two bays working for them was probably sufficient for their need. And they weren't, they didn't need that other bay. And, and so that's why they hadn't called the professionals because that's not something that they necessarily needed. It's maybe something that they would like to use at busy times, but it wasn't a necessity right now. So that's when I kind of looked into, okay, what would it cost to get boots on the ground to have a professional look at it? What would the hourly rate be? And then I provided, I, I reimbursed her like, probably it was $400 total. So it would have been approximately two hours worth of repairs, travel fees and whatnot for the, for a professional to get out there. And she was thrilled. She was thrilled with that outcome. 
I don't know if she'll ever get it repaired because I think it was enough for their need. But you know what, if they, if their restaurant, you know, grows and they choose at some point to get it repaired, they have that option. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. What great customer service. Absolutely. And that's one thing that I will point out, even your customer service back and forth, good customer service doesn't mean when you do have a problem, you have to say, okay, I'll give you a refund right now, or you have to do this Mm -hmm. or that. It means getting the information. You'll, you understand what Jenny said. Hey, I I reached out. I tried to figure out if it was a shipping issue. Maybe Mm -hmm. the, the shipping company damaged it. All you have to do is be um, willing to reach out and figure out, be an investigator, figure out what exactly happened, what's going on. And that right there starts the good communication. And then you go back and forth, you build your case. If there, if it, something did happen and it wasn't your fault, you know that because you're communicating very well and the buyer's thinking you're on their side, which you are, but at the same time, you're just doing good communication, which puts the buyer, it brings down their, the, the wall that yeah. they're thinking, yes. oh shoot, I bought this and I got screwed on it. When yes. you start to try and help them and communicate with them, it brings mm-hmm. that wall down and they're like, all right, well, these people want to help me. They want to see, you know, this succeed or this, this transaction work. So Jenny did such an amazing job at that. And even I'll add in, I don't think you had to give them the $400 mm-hmm. back. Was that a great idea? Absolutely. Because you made her happy. You mm-hmm. still make great, great money on this whole mm-hmm. transaction. That was awesome. And it's just thinking about that stuff and yeah, great customer service and, and just handling, diffusing the problem really. I mean, it turned out really, really well. So that's it awesome. Did. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people are hesitant to, you know, get started or do some of these things because they're scared of what could happen. But then if someone, something happens, you're like, okay, well, we got through it. It wasn't that bad. And it only mm-hmm. happens one out of how many, you know, mm-hmm. shipments does, does something like this happen? So if you got it, then now you're ready to tackle anything that comes your way. So this is the real question. <laughs> After you went through the sale, you paid 225 250 whatever you did, mm-hmm. and you sold it for that. All the issues that you had, you know, the whole process, would you do it again if you had to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but but it's funny because there are different barriers that, that, that I kind of create for myself in this business. So even though I would do it again right after this sale and we shipped it out, I noticed I started like in my algorithms on Facebook, I started getting a lot more items that had that were never popping up on their own. And so it was maybe two weeks before Christmas and I found a commercial grade total gym that was at, let's see, a physical therapy place, a physical therapy clinic that they were giving away for free. And I saw it and I showed it to my husband and instantly I thought it's two weeks before Christmas. Even though this is in the same town, I don't want to deal with it. I have too much going on. And he's like, are you crazy? <laughs> he's like, we need to go get this. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. It's I've got too much to do. So th- I'm noticing that I still have these barriers sometimes. I, I think of all the things that I have to do. And I think I don't, I, I feel like I don't have time for them. But he pushed me into that one. So like right after that sold. Before we even had it shipped, we had purchased this. We ended up getting this total gym for free. And so, and and I think there was another item that popped up that we got for free. That was another commercial grade unit that I probably wouldn't have gone and picked up had it not been for the success with this. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Now that you started looking at commercial stuff, that's starting to pop up for you. Yes, cool too. it is. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing that I've noticed too. And this is a note to everybody. When you're looking through Facebook, offer up and uh, Craigslist, I don't think they do it as much, but offer up the more of the items that you're actually searching out for, the more they're going to try to throw those items in your feed mm-hmm. and you're going to see better deals and you're going to see a lot more of that stuff. Cause even for us at Facebook, I'll jump in and look for some stuff for our house or something that I'm looking to buy. Cause I don't go out and buy new stuff. I, that's just not in my blood to ever do that when we need yeah. something i'm on facebook i'm on offer up i'm trying to find a deal like right now we're trying Never to get pay full price yeah get bunk beds for the kids and i'm not going out there shopping in these department stores yeah. or, you know i'm not looking on new websites i'm looking on facebook the problem is when you do that and look for these now certain items bunk beds. that's it so now <laughs> facebook starts throwing you and they're like hey this guy wants a bunk bed let me load him with that <laughs> so the cool thing is if you get that change so when you start looking for the commercial items you start looking for the vulcan mm-hmm. you start looking for jenny or you start looking for all these great name brands Facebook and offer up are like, all right, well, this is what they want. Let's start throwing an at them. So yeah. that's why you're even seeing now some really cool stuff or, you know, commercial grade stuff's coming into your feed. And it's like, okay, yes. this is cool. Now I, I've never seen this before. So it's really, really cool. That's just an extra point to point out mm-hmm. for you out there sourcing who can't find what you're looking for or the high profit items. Maybe you need to switch it up and start doing the search for some of those commercial items mm-hmm. um, and all that kind of stuff. And then it'll start showing you more of the, the more that you look at, that's what they're going to start showing you more of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very powerful. 
Uh, those algorithms are so powerful. And I, I was really very surprised at what I was able to find just naturally by, by saying yes to this fryer. All of these great items were popping into my feed that even though I was searching commercial grade, there was something about actually inquiring about the items that made the, the algorithms all the more powerful. I so, love it. And yeah. you're still doing this kind of like on the side, you're a stay at home mom. You're still do, mm-hmm. doing the school with the kids and your husband's working, right? Like, My husband cool. works full time. Okay, so it's a business time. that we do together. The kids okay. are back in brick and mortar school. Okay. So I'm, I'm still a stay at home mom, but this is like my gig. This is <laughs> like, I have no interest in doing any other jobs. This is just way too much fun. And I've, I've, I've never made this kind of money before. So I am getting used to like working fewer hours and making more money. So <laughs> I love it. flexibility. I, I absolutely love this business plan and it's great. Can you, it. can you tell us like, what are you on, what are you averaging around a month? Like, on um, sales or, I know it, it can, it, I know it can flux, fluctuate a lot, but it fluctuates like, last month. It was $9,000. That was January. That was supposed to be a, a bad month, you know, <laughs> right after Christmas. It was unbelievable. Uh-huh. Um, so I would say if you averaged maybe the last six months, probably seven to $8,000 a month. Awesome. I so, love it. Awesome. Yeah. It is so exciting, especially for a part-time mom, you know, our full-time mom doing this on the part on the part-time. That's really cool. That's awesome that you have the capabilities. And the, the best part about all this is the better you get at it, the more like you did the fryer, you see what your potential is. I'm telling you, your hours start to drop even more. You start yeah. to be very efficient with what you're doing and your your income goes up and up because you're learning the process. You're learning mm-hmm. all that. And you're just proof of that. I mean, you're, you're showing You've us done that the work. exactly yeah. once you get into it and you really, really dive in and learn how to do it, uh, you just get way, way more efficient with what you're doing. So that's so exciting. Thanks. What would you tell somebody or what do you even tell yourself or somebody else? Like if when your confidence drops, like, are you, do you kind of have to re shift things in your mind or like, what would you tell the, give somebody a Great question. piece of advice on how they can get past their own roadblocks? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, posting things to the group is a great thing to do because I mean, my confidence drops periodically where I just, I, I don't want to you know, try different things, or I just want to stick with my own comfort zone. So bringing things to the group would be a great thing to do. Another thing that I do is just ask my husband because we have different, very different personalities. So he is often one to like push me into trying new things where sometimes I'm like, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want it. I fear sets in and I, I think I don't want to try something, but, but we're a good balance that way. And also seeing the success that the, the people have in the group that's huge. There's so much knowledge to be gained from the group yeah. that it's, it's priceless. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It For definitely sure. is helpful to, to see everybody and, and helping people walk through the, their issues mm-hmm. they have. And like you said, I think it was, a lot, uh, I think it was this week you were saying, you know, every business you're going to come up with something and you just have to figure out how to overcome it. And you know, they're not all the time, but when they do happen, you have a support group to help exactly. you walk through it. So you're not walking through it alone. You even said the, to me the other day, like, I wish I had the support. <laughs> like until I didn't have to go and do this alone when I was starting. Absolutely. Like it's, there's, it's a lot. It's huge. It's powerful. <laughs> just like you notice. I mean, it's just really, really cool to have a place that you can bounce ideas off of people. You can come with people, come to people that, you know, you're having a, a something bad just happen. And, you know, without you overreacting on it, you ask other people's opinions. They give you great opinions mm-hmm. who might've already gone through the situation. So it is, it's very powerful. It's very, very cool to be able to do this. It yeah. shortens that learning curve. It does. That's what it does. It, yeah. it just, what I have learned in a short period of time from flea market, from the flipping for profit, profit group and, and flipper university, it's just, it's tremendous because it's so skills based. You just learn one, you know, one item, whether it be cooktops or Nordic tracks or sleep numbers, and then you have the knowledge base there, and then you move on to the other item. And when you come across problems, you bring it to the group, and they walk you through the whole step. And it's amazing. Yeah. It it would take me. It would have taken me years to get this far. I probably never would have gotten this far. <laughs> My husband and I were still doing it the our old way. Like I'd probably be back at work right now. I would be, I would be working full time now that the kids are off to school. I would not be pursuing this, this flipping business. And I love it. Now we we don't, now we won't want to do it any other way. And the canoe might still be on the table too, right? (laughs) Yes, yes it would. (laughs) 
Uh, Joanne, if you have any uh, questions for Jenny before we hop off, let us know. Uh, Joanna said you gave me goosebumps saying that listening to me helped you make that decision to buy a fryer. Proud of you and honored to help a little bit. That's You're a awesome. rock star, Jenny. So, so. And that's just from the group. I mean, that's uh, interaction from the group, which is really, really cool. So Jenny, thanks for jumping on here. We want to be respectful of your time. Greatly appreciate all your knowledge, all that you bring to even the group and even just to doing this, uh, this quick interview. Greatly appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much for doing this and being a part of our community for sure. It's awesome. Oh, no problem. Thank you guys.